what is up everybody you all know who i am i'm jeremy you guys are watching inside the coils greatly appreciate everybody tuning in tonight tell you what folks it has been a week it has been a weekend to say the least uh I don't know if I'm happy that tomorrow starts my normal work week, but this weekend was kind of crazy. Uh, I did get to vend at uh, Hamburg Reptile Expo. Uh, now it's in Morgantown, not Hamburg, PA. So I don't know if you call it the Morgantown or if it's still Hamburg. Anyway, I'm going to call it Hamburg because that's just what most people know it as. But I got the privilege of uh, vending there. With John and Christine from Triforce Morphs. And uh, it was a rough show. I'm not going to lie, folks. It was a little rough. Um, did sell one snake uh, right off the rip. And the rest of the show, I mean, I was trying like hell. But th th it was it was hard work, folks. It was hard work to make them sales out there. Uh, some people did good. Some people didn't. I, that's just the way the cookie crumbles. You cannot crush it all the time. But anyway... You guys don't want to hear me talk about that crap. You guys are here to see Taylor from Red Moon Royals tonight. So we're going to bring her out. We're going to chit chat, talk about all sorts of stuff. Definitely going to be talking some TSK talk though, because you know what? All you VPI haters are going to learn what real Exantic is. And Nathan, if you're in the chat, just shut up before you start texting anything. <laughs> oh, look, Nathan is in the chat. All right. So Nathan, don't you dare put anything in that chat. <laughs> <laughs> but let's bring taylor out and uh, so that way she can take some abuse with me here because i just stirred up a hornet's nest <laughs> what's up taylor hello hello so I i'm waiting we're i'm waiting to see what smart ass comment nathan has for me here because i know i stirred up his the, the uh, hornet's nest with him there yep. uh, <laughs> i'm a glutton for punishment sometimes it never <laughs> ceases to amaze me you would think i would learn but i just don't <laughs> Let's go through, say hi to some people, we'll say thanks to some of our sponsors then, and then we'll get the show rolling. We, rolling. we got J&S Exotics, James Perry. What's going on? Thanks for tuning in. We got Tara from Voodoo Doll Royals. What's up, girl? Thanks for tuning in. One of our uh, top tier channel members. Thank you very much, Tara. Um, I'm thinking this weekend for any channel members is I'm going to be doing a member live, so keep that in mind. Got to figure out if it's going to be Friday night or Saturday night. I got to see what my work schedule is and where I'm at and try to figure all that stuff out. So be prepared. It's either going to be this weekend or next weekend. Uh, also, you know, maybe, well, no, I won't do a live clutch pulling on a member live because that would be a pain in the ass trying to film that. Um, so anyway, yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out. But we will have, be having a member live here either this week or next, Tara. So make sure you are ready. F God, I'm gonna screw this up. Effie, I'm, we're just gonna say Effie. Yeah, yep, that's Effie. That's my mom. <laughs> oh, okay. Hi, mom. <laughs> I was gonna say I'm so gonna screw this up. I, like, all right, we'll just go with the first name because I'm not. <laughs> I, I'm just not gonna do it tonight. <laughs> I'm gonna screw up too many hornets nests as it is tonight. <laughs> Thomas, what's up, dude? Thanks for tuning in. We all know this guy right here, Nathan. From Infinite Possible Pythons, one of our channel sponsors. And uh, if you guys want to go and get bang, you got to go to Nathan. He is the bang daddy, guys. What you guys will find out all about this stuff from his little promo here in a little while. But Nathan, what's up, bro? Thanks for tuning in. Matt B, what's going on? Thanks for tuning in. Uh, look, see right there we go. There's there's my buddy. <laughs> Jeremy finally found another blind friend. Yes, Nathan, I did. But as I recall, you were rather blinded by the light at Hamburg, along with just about everybody else that walked by my stand. I mean, you're his Nathan's poor wife. I swear she probably went back there and running it back to their table, running into all sorts of stuff. Like, <laughs> I tell you what, it was sad. It was sad. <laughs> uh, Blue Zombie, what's up? Thanks for tuning in. Barnes Family Pies. Rob, what's going on? Thanks for tuning in. Yes, smash that like button, everybody. And please, if you are new, 
hit that subscribe button. I greatly appreciate all the love and support. And uh, I think they got the channel membership. This is, maybe it's something you're interested in. Some killer stuff going to be pumping out here this year, folks. Some TSK stuff. There's some, uh, well, I can't even, no, I can't spoil that one. There's some really nice TSK stuff coming out this year, though. Some of it's in the in the uh, hatchling rack back there right now, um, waiting to shut out. But it's some really nice stuff. Folks. I'm not going to lie. Plus the carpets. The carpets. Tell you what, Taylor, you need a carpet python just along with everybody else. You all need a carpet. Yep. Um, uh, I, I it it's it surprises me like even at the show I had a couple people come up asking for carpets. Um, one guy even he had, he was like he's like dude he's like I want a carpet from you. I was like okay. Walked him through how to get on the waiting list. He goes here. He just handed me his phone. He's like just freaking do it, man, because I want one. I like, all right, all right. So, guy, we got one another one on the waiting list. There's like four or five people on the waiting list for carpets already. Nice. So. uh Super excited about that because they should be uh, what the first clutch was nice and big. Should be some killer stuff. Kike, what's going on, dude? Right there's one of the guys that's got one of the babies from the first year. Uh, Kike, you got one hell of a stunner. Hopefully, I can produce some more. I, and uh, Kike, if I'm not mistaken, you need a female for that boy. So, uh, man, you know, hey, there's gonna be some more here for you. Christy, another channel member. What's going on, Chris? Thanks for tuning in. So let's go ahead. We'll run one of the uh, sponsor ads here quick, and then we'll jump into this, Taylor. Sounds good. Make sure you check out Nathan at Infinite Possible Pythons. He is your guy to go to if you want to get into the Bang Project. On top of it, he's working a bunch of awesome ball python projects. Kahua geckos, Lichianus geckos, crested geckos, some scaleless corn snakes, and he is your one-stop shop for all your branding needs. So check him out. Make sure you check out Chris at BNS Reptilia. If you're looking for a ball python, boa, colubrid, blood python, he is the guy to go to. He's also a rat breeder on the eastern side of PA, and he is Pennsylvania's distributor of Cocoa to Go and the Chipper, which is by far the best cocoa substrate on the market today. So make sure you go ahead and check him out. <laughs> TK says, take my money already in my kidney <laughs> while you are while you're at it. <laughs> dude, uh, TK, you're I would love, like, if you want one, dude, I will hook you up. I will have to say, I don't know if you want to pick one from the first clutch or the second clutch, because they're going to be probably about a month away from each other hatching. But you could get one that's half related or one that's got the same mom and dad, which is what clutch one would be. Uh, clutch one is the repeat pairing that did your baby. Um, clutch number two would be same dad, which is Xena. I know misleading name. Every, you all know the whole story with Xena deciding that he that she wanted to be he. And yeah, fooled me. Um, but anyway. Zeno and pair he was paired to Celeste Chris from BNS Reptilia's girl. So uh that's gonna be another killer clutch. I'm actually waiting on her to clutch drop her clutch. She was due the 11th, and we're still waiting. She's not very happy with me though, because I keep poking in there like morning. Today I poked in the middle of the day, and then at nighttime before I go to bed, I check on her and she get, lets me know she's kind of not happy with me for peeking in. <laughs> but uh I, I can't help it can't help it <laughs> gotta know mainly mainly I, I i come with i've come up to the realization though a lot of snakes i've noticed from watching videos and stuff if you wait and let them kind of re, re like get that energy level back that's when they're spicy and snap like i think my the part of the reason i've been so lucky with pulling cart uh carpet clutches so far is because i catch them you know, shortly after they've laid and they haven't had enough time to fully get their spunk back. I, and Chris's girl is when I don't want her to get her spunk. Um, I'm pretty sure she will light my ass up. <laughs> now, let's see. Ooh, Edge of Panic, Ball Pythons. What's going on? Thanks for tuning in. So, Taylor, give us a little bit of rundown. Who are you and uh, what got you into breeding? All that good stuff. <sighs> um... I, that, I mean, I'm, I'm Taylor. I, I'm running on three brain cells today, so I do apologize. <laughs> um, so I just, um, I, I've been in it for four years, I think now. Um, okay. But we did, all growing up, I've had, my parents had snakes, so we've had 
ball pythons back when it was just normals you could really get from the pet store. Um, we've had boas, kind of a little bit of everything, the garters. Um, we had a little bit of a um, tragedy, I guess, in a way, where we lost our oldest snakes about 15 years ago um, at the same time because we lost the heat in our house and couldn't Ooh. couldn't keep them warm enough. Um, but that's a whole problem of its own. Um, so we stayed, we, we kind of got nervous after that and didn't really do much. And then about six years ago now, I think my parents got a pied and they were so excited and that got me, it like kind of reignited it for me. So, okay. um, I finally talked the husband into getting a ball python of our own and, um, we finally did that and it just kind of went from one to a hundred within about two years. <laughs> I get that. I get that. Yeah. The, especially with babies that, that happens real quick. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but um, I mean, the, the biggest blessing to me, I think is um, that first ball Python that we got was from Brian Barcheck over at BHB. Um, we, got to know them very well and helped them move in um, both sides of the reptarium. So 1.0 and 2.0. Oh, okay. um, and I think that kind of helped me talk the husband into branching out and getting something other than a fuzzy pet. Um, and it just kind of went from there. I mean, I think I'm down to 80 now though. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. We think we're just down to 80, Taylor. And once those eggs start rolling in, it just goes right back up. Yeah. My, my mom was over today. She made it was Dom's birthday on the 10th. So she came up. I don't know how kids have this magic power to be like, hey Nana, can you come up to my house and make me supper at my house instead of me going to you? Yep. Like, but anyway, she, she was we were talking. She was so how many steps are you down to right now? Like, um it's like I really don't know. I was like, let, let's just say 80, 90, somewhere in there. She goes, wait, wait, don't, oh, I don't really know anymore. It's like, yep. I don't count. I just know there's, they're there. I take care of them. Yep. Oh, look at this guy. Chris Balls Deep Reptiles. What's up, brother? Thanks for tuning in. Uh, this is He was one guy I was expecting to see show up in Hamburg, and he didn't even come out and say hi to it or anything. <laughs> He's probably too busy making his memes for the day or something. He's, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, I do want. I did. I I have to say this. I do want to give a shout out to Wicked Oaks Pythons. Wicked Oak Pythons. They gave me this badass shirt at the Lebanon show. I did forget this. I was going to wear it last week for the live auction because I told him I was going to wear it. And I thought, shit, it's like, it's Kai's always like, I don't want to, like, I just felt bad shouting out another person on, you know, when I could wear Kai's shirt. So yeah, okay. thank you very much to Wicked Oak Pythons for the shirt. Fits really nice. I love it. And it is a badass design on it, too. Yeah. Like Chris says, Hamburg sucks. Dude, uh, like, I think uh, there was some excitement, apparently, at Hamburg. Um, but this... This is uh, this Hamburg was a little rough. It was a little rough to say the least, but maybe it's just the show. I don't know. Uh, Chris says Jan is an awesome guy, awesome and great guy. I know him and I, had, he, had, he has, I forget what morph it is. He's got like a new morph and it does some interesting stuff. So he's talking to me about it and it kind of got my wheels turning. But I want to see what else he kind of does with it before I even remotely think about jumping on it. But uh, let's get did some neat stuff from what I could see. But anyway, so you were talking about Brian Parchak, the Brian Barcheck and everything. So what? What? How did he influence you and in everything? And like, what were some of the? I don't want to say key driving tips or motivators that he gave you because i know there had there had to be a lot because i know just the little bit of time that i've gotten to talk to you and stuff that he was a big factor in 
you and the business. And I'm just kind of curious as to like, just and curious about some of that as to, you know, what were some of the big things that he's, that he did do for you? So a lot of it probably is just the same as most people. I mean, his videos, I mean, teaching you to stay positive and follow what you want to do and don't give up, which he definitely showed us through the end. Um, <laughs> but um, I, I think mostly what he has had really done for me is he, he taught me the importance of educating people. Like for me, it's always just been like, oh, that snake's really pretty. And I try to show people and they're, you know, ew, ew, it's a, ew. <laughs> but, but he, like the, just the way, and especially like going to the reptarium and seeing how he and the team approach things. If people are like scared of the tarantulas or the, the snakes and just seeing their approach on it, it really hit hard for me just to really kind of steer. Like I do, I, I'm, planning to make a lot of beautiful animals, but I really kind of want to steer to the education side too, okay. just to, just to show that they're not these slimy, scary, always out to bite you kind of animals. Um, that was probably my biggest takeaway. <laughs> um, but he just... He was an amazing guy. That's for sure. He, um, I think the hardest part of it for me was, and Effie can correct me if I'm wrong, but we went to visit and we tried to go every three to four months, just go to the reptarium, visit with everybody. Um, and she and I went over, um, specifically to talk to him about actually like doing like a mentorship with him to okay. like get the ins and outs of how to ultrasound. Cause I'm not the greatest at it, but it, it works. So I was like, you know, learning how to do that and palpating and just all the ins and outs of the, the stuff and um, bless his heart. He's like, yep, yeah, well, we can do that. We can definitely do that. And so um, I remember him saying that afternoon that um, he was down to do it but he had some stomach pain that he was going through that he just kind of wanted to get through before yeah. really kicking it off. And it was probably a week and a half, maybe two weeks later that he announced the diagnosis. And still he was texting me like, we can try for this weekend. And then that weekend would come and he'd be like, I'm sorry. I just, I, I don't know. And I'm like, no, like you're more important right now. Yeah. Like I'm not, I don't want to push. Like if it works, it works. If it doesn't, but that just, that hit so hard that it's like, he probably had an idea of what was going on and still was like, yeah, well, we can do that. But well, I think, I think Brian was one of those guys that you, you can't keep a good guy down. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've I never met Brian. I watched. I know I watched his his YouTube channel a lot and everything. Um, yeah. Scared the hell out of me when he was cutting with those razor blades. But man, he was good at it. <laughs> Every time I was like, cringe, I was like, "Oh my god!" I scared to death to do that. Man, yeah. was, oh, I'll give him that with a, with a razor blade. Yeah. Um, but no, like he definitely taught and inspired many, many, many people. And you're just one of those people that he that you were close enough mm -hmm. and you were able to get a little bit more of that experience with him than most people would. And that's freaking awesome. Yeah. And I, I think my, my favorite kind of awkward memory. Is <laughs> we went to Animal Con last year for the first time. Okay. And um, we were it was just my mom and I and we're, we're walking around. We don't really know what we want to do. And. We're like, oh, let's go to this this room because so and so and so and so are talking. And we walked in. Brian wasn't even supposed to be on the panel. And we walked in and we're late. We're like 10 minutes late for this one. And so we like snuck in the door and we're hiding in the corner. All of a sudden from the table we see and we looked up and it's just Brian. Like in the middle of this thing, he's like talking with everyone else and he's waving at us. And we're like, 
<laughs> oh. But I, that, like, that's just how he was. Like, he just so positive and he loved to support you no matter how big or small you were. And I, it sucks not having him. But no, I can. Especially with, with you being so close to him, I can imagine that you know that, that definitely hit hard. And I, I didn't, I, I didn't mean to bring up something that might be a little bit emotional for you, so I do apologize on that. No, you're um, fine. I'm, I'm still in denial, so it's. <laughs> wow, well, I get it. I mean, it, it's like it doesn't seem real that it that it did happen. Mm -hmm. Freaking Chris. <laughs> <laughs> oh Chris I tell you what <laughs> I, I, real quick it, do do tell some of the, some of this whole how, why this whole hero thing between you two because I know a little bit of this but maybe the maybe the rest of the everybody in the chat here would love to hear this story because some of it I think is kind of it's interesting. <laughs> trying to think of what she might say i know recently he did a picture for her that she's in love with ah uh. <laughs> but um i'm not allowed to talk about it so oh, <laughs> well, didn't you didn't you get a a uh a snake from Chris, like one of your, like a long time ago or something? Or? Yeah. Yep. I've got two from him. Um, I got, the heck is she? Mahogany, yellow belly calico. And then we don't, that. I'm trying to read. The light's too bright. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she's right behind my light here. Um, super pastel, cinnamon. I think super cinnamon, but maybe oh black pastel. So super oh. pastel, cinnamon, black pastel. Oh, that'd be pretty. And she's a mm, she's a bad word. But you, I love you, her. You've got a demon too. Uh huh. <laughs> that, that, I've got one over here. It was I got it from Danny at his <laughs> last live at the last live auction. And I remember he on the auction, he said, Oh yeah, she's a sweetheart, this and that. I should I went because I went back and watched the video. I found that point because I thought it's like like this girl is not of this earth, okay? Like she there's no ball python I have ever seen or anything that moves like this girl. Like it's, she might be part like uh what the hell's a fast ass snake like a like she, she's super like she is way too fast for a ball python. Oh, and she's mean. She when I went to get her out the one time, she freaking like threw her tail and her whole body threw out half her cocoa and one sweat. Like she just spazzed out. Like she is the devil, and she wants every every bit of blood you got. Um, yep. <laughs> and I went back and watched the video. I was like, yeah, Danny went and said on how she's so nice, and but then he like. He went, did the kind of one of those little, like, little, huh? <laughs> like, after he said it, I was like, I should have freaking, <laughs> he knew I wanted that freaking snake to stay quiet. <laughs> yup. Now, this one from Chris, she cracks me up because if you open a tub anywhere in her radius, even if it's not hers, she will start hissing at me just, just because I'm around. And I'm just like, okay. really? But I have to say, we fell in love with her because of a video that he posted of her being really nasty. And I was like, <laughs> I gotta have her. <laughs> so you asked for the punishment even. Yep. yep. <laughs> oh, Taylor. Well, he says, yeah, if you can show, show any of them off. <sighs> Anybody got gene suggestions? I got a little bit of everything just about. <laughs> Or Effie, were you talking about just one of the one of the two, or both of them from Chris? And Nathan said he's seen it all now. Chris is someone's hero. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Nathan. <laughs> oh 
man. The the love is strong between those two. That is for sure. James said he just got bit today by one of his girls. Didn't even have time to react. That's, I mean, sometimes they got the attitude, but I know that one I got from Danny, she is not of this earth. I will tell you that much now. She is like the devil reincarnate. Like, evil. <laughs> The one I love to show off is in blue, of course. Oh, that's... Oh, she wants you to show off the bitey one. Okay, so Mike's favorite girl is the one that's in shed, so she kind of screwed up my plan there. <laughs> we'll, we'll get bitey out if she's not in blue. Oh, your face level. <laughs> Oh, she doesn't seem that bad. No, I caught her off guard, I think. <laughs> Let me bring the light. Oh, there she goes. <laughs> nah, she's letting you know. She's just letting you know she's there. That's all. Decent. Oh, she is pretty. But no, I love her. Oh, that was smooth. Come here. For reals. But she's got like the white flex on her i think the side shows it yeah right. but she has yellow in there too that comes out here and there so i just think that's really neat she is pretty mm -hmm. is pretty, 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 too. <laughs> pretty with an attitude exactly <laughs> uh, so what are they saying here in the all right they're just saying hi to everybody so what are what are some of the what are some of your like big projects that you're working with, Taylor? Uh, recessive, recessive wise. Oh boy, you're making me think now. <laughs> oh. Mostly. So the biggest ones are probably hide and clown. Okay. Um, we have a small group of ultramels that we're working. And then I'm trying to think of what else. I had lavender albinos, but I just sold him. Mike says go get the anaconda. <laughs> Mike, you really want this poor girl to get bit. <laughs> I mean, I can I can request him. I'll make Warren bring him in so that he gets bit first. <laughs> now you're thinking now you're thinking that's right i forgot you have an anaconda what in the world like i i have no idea what would make you want to own an anaconda you know it was a you mix know, like, of it was one of brian's babies okay all right and we just kind of wanted something different i mean we we've got a couple of boas and i've got a, a king snake um but we just kind of wanted somebody that would be meaty, not just. Well, you definitely got a good one there. <laughs> I don't know, like anaconda. Like, there's just something about like they're cool snakes because they are so freaking big. They're just big. Yup. But uh, there's something with their head. There's just something with their head that's just like you are one ugly sob. <laughs> mm -hmm. I always tell Warren, I'm like, this dude is so fugly. I can't. <laughs> Yes, it's just like wow. It's like uh -huh. Mother Nature was not kind to you at all when she designed your ass. Part. Right. <laughs> I just heard him get out of bed, so hopefully he'll be here in a minute. Oh, he's he's probably cursing. Yeah, he probably. His snakes stay in the kitchen. Oh, okay. <laughs> Holly, what's up, girl? Since Holly's here in the chat now, I do want to shout out. Now you guys can put a little bit of face to the name uh holly from texum exotics which she is the reason why we've got this awesome background the very nice intro and outro she helps make this show run a lot smoother when we're doing the live streams and everything with the uh like the live auctions and stuff holly makes those things run so smooth for me folks it she just makes me look good that's all there is to it holly helps me look professional so if you guys need any help with your youtube stuff like 
you know, intros, that type of deal, background stuff, hit Holly up. Logos, hit Holly up, guys. Texoma Exotics. And plus, go check out our YouTube channel as well. Mm-hmm. All right, let's see. Everybody going off here. Uh, do, 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 do. See, I wish I could see like the little emoji things because I can't see like the little emoji things on my side. I know I designed them, but like <laughs> I just wish I could freaking seal. <laughs> but also, everybody, that's another perk if you if you join up in the memberships, you get some of those awesome little emoji things that I designed. I mean, that's man, that's top quality work right there. I tell you what. <laughs> oh, yeah, awesome. All on. right, all right, we're gonna. Oh, he's just a little guy. Yeah, he's going to be, what, two in July? Mm-hmm. July 1st. Yeah. And we're not power feeding, of course, too, because we want to keep him a little on the smaller side. But Now, is that green, a green anaconda or yellow? Green. Okay. My God, they got one ugly freaking head. <laughs> <laughs> I do love their pattern. Like... Their yeah. pattern is really cool. It's just that freaking head. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, but he's he's calming down. He was quite the feisty one for a while. I was going to say, yeah, I, I kind of expected a little bit more, like, fight there. I'm mm-hmm. learning I, he doesn't like to be manhandled. Like, I can manhandle my ball pythons. He does not like the fast movements. So now that I'm figuring that out with him, um we get along a little bit better <laughs> okay that makes that makes sense so that's kind of like the same thing with when i'm working with xena um <laughs> you got slower movements because they've got that reaction strike sometimes yep. if you move quick you you know you might catch the wrong end of it yep but there for a while i couldn't do anything with him without getting at least two or three bites <laughs> and peed on <laughs> oh See, I, th- I would rather I would rather take the bites than get feet and pooped on. Like, yep. I, I, yeah, Charlie, what's up, dude? Gray Rider Reptiles, guys. Another, no, I'm gonna do another plug here for the membership. If you guys pick the top tier of the membership, you get ten per a ten percent off act or shed test code that does not expire. So uh, check that out, folks. That in itself pays. Uh, it makes all it makes so much sense to become a channel member, but uh, super happy that Charlie did partner up with me on that one. Uh, it's, and if you, if you're not even a member, folks, use Charlie for your shed test. Gray Rider Reptiles, shedtesting.com. Use him fast response time, and I will tell you this much: I've been super pleased. Like you get the sheds to Charlie, you probably got them within a week. Um, maybe now, maybe it's a little bit more because everybody's using Charlie, but, uh, he's still got super fast turnaround times, guys. Super fast. I've never waited longer than, uh, I mean, if you're going to like, I really don't think I've ever waited longer than a week, but let's just say two weeks. We'll give Charlie benefit that. Maybe he's got a life, <laughs> but, uh, everybody go, you know, check out Charlie. Use him for your shed testing needs, please. Greatly appreciate it. Plus, he, he's always hooked everybody up from the live auctions. Every if you got in a snake from the live auctions here on the channel, you got 25% off your shed test for that animal, which is freaking awesome. Charlie's an awesome guy. Uh, I will say this, Joe Charlie. I've got two sheds I'm gonna have to send up to you here once uh the new snake I just got sheds. I need to uh Find out if it is Het Clown and Het Hypo. Because if it is, I really, really got to give John and Christine a big old hug. Because <laughs> <laughs> not only did it did it get me into a whole new project, but it also brought in uh, some Hets with it. So that'll be awesome. Excuse me. So seeing Hello, Charlie boy. made me think, I've got a shed from this girl that I got to send him. Um where are you going? So she is actually from Kevin over at Sugar Skull. Okay. And she's a pinstripe pastel lesser yellow belly pos clown. That is a freaking mouthful. Pins 
God, I can't even remember all that. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful animal, though. Yeah, I wish my stinking lighting was better. I thought getting my big bars would make it better, but... But, yep, she's super cool. So that'd be sweet if she proves out hat. And now seeing Charlie, too, it made me remember I gotta get this girl that's in blue that saved that shed. <laughs> and Charlie says, two weeks is too long. Once I get at home, I'm sure I'll be busy catching up after this dumb vacation. All right, Charlie, the big thing is, all right, I, what, you were at Disney World or something? Disney Ooh. World, is that what he said? Disney, all right. Charlie, yeah. you better have gone to Star Wars Land for me. And I like, if you didn't go to Star Wars Land for me, I will be very sad. Like, just very sad. I think everybody that if you go to Disney, you've got to go to Star Wars Land just for me because <laughs> Lord knows when I'll ever get to go there. My wife probably will never let me go because she knows that I'll probably never leave and I'll spend too much money. <laughs> and I'll have to just rent a freaking U-Haul van to get all the crap home that I bought. <laughs> uh let's see here let's see well what's up thanks for tuning in stan what's up dude love the new logo i don't think that, i don't think i've noticed that one very nice looking logo my friend thank you very much for tuning in and Kristen's in the chat along with mike let's see who else we got in here popping in i think exotic a1 pets what's up thanks for tuning in good to see you so clown I, everybody's working on it now what is your you what's your most favorite project that you're diving into this year or not just this year but that you're diving into that's a tough one there's only one real answer taylor i know but we don't know if he's tsk or not <laughs> <It's the world>. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> now, that's probably what I'm the most excited for to see if he proves out or not. <laughs> okay, okay. So, okay. All right. Well, if he doesn't prove out, I've got that male sitting here <laughs> that is ready to go. He's on the morph market. Fair enough. <laughs> you just let me know. He's okay. visual heck clown. <laughs> and he's no. what I consider dirt ass cheap for a visual hat. <laughs> yup. Yep, she's so the female sitting. Oh, where was she? She was sitting at 25 millimeters last week. So hopefully she'll keep. She's been getting about five millimeters a month, I'd say. Okay. So hopefully, end of the summer, we'll know for sure whether he's truly a TSK oh, or not. That, that, oh, that would, that would suck. If he proved that not now, is it that you don't know if he is, you don't know if it's TSK or VPI, or you just don't know if the T the het is there. So he, he's that one. He was, a um, what I would say a visual when we got him, but he was one of the, um, <clears throat> pet store purchases. So they didn't really um, know what he was. Yeah, I remember. And as he's aged, he's just browned out like crazy. Like he almost just looks like the pastel het female that he's going to. Okay. So I do re I do remember you sending me the pictures now of that one. I do. Because yeah. yeah. I was just kind of like saying, wow, what the world yeah. happened? Yep. So just because just because Mark here with this comment, uh <laughs> just because of him, I'll make an exception for him on this one. But just because you're saying it did brown out like it did, I'm going to guess it's not TSK and that it's probably VPI. Yeah. <laughs> I need to see if one of these days when he sheds, I need to maybe send that to Charlie too, just to get the uh, VPI out of the picture. Well, Charlie's just going to have, correct me if I'm wrong, Charlie, but he's going to have TSK soon too. Uh, I think he's getting that map now or nice. should have been sending that out anyway. Because I know my leopard exantic girl just shed. And I messaged him. I was like, hey, do you need any more sheds? He says, he told me, no, we're good. Nice. So we should have TSK soon. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Mark says, you obviously have TSK. <laughs> hey, you know, the funny part is with my maiden name, my initials were TKS. So I have to like it. <laughs> see there you see there it's meant to be it is meant to yep. be 
Stan says MJ equals beautiful. MJ is very nice. MJ is very nice. This, so which here's what gets me with the Xanthic stuff is that VPI, there's so much VPI out there. TSK comes second. So why are all the other ones not like there's very few of all the others after TSK like becomes like very, very slim pickings for everything else. And everybody like so many people love MJ. But if why is it MJ more used if it's so good? I don't get it because anybody that I've ever asked, well, why did you go VPI nine times out of ten? The answer I have always gotten was. Well, that's it, that's what everybody works. So it's just like, well, if everybody jumps off a bridge, are you going to do it too? <laughs> right. <laughs> well, says MJ rarely makes it to morph markets. That's why. But I don't see it anywhere, though. Like, even at shows, I don't see it. Everything you see at shows is VPI. Um, you might come across a TSK guy here and there. Um. Trying to think, I, I I I will own up to my idiot moment here before Nathan throws me under the bus. I was so proud of myself. I told Nathan yesterday, I called him up on the way home from the show. I was like, dude, I was like, I thought you were the only person that worked jo the Jolliffe line of Exanthic. I was like, there's a guy at the show that had a whole bunch of Jolliffe stuff. I was like, it was freaking awesome, you know, to see somebody else that's actually working that line, the same line that you have too. He goes, dude, that was. Mike Jolliffe, like, <laughs> or what, what, or whatever is I think his first name's Mike, but he goes, dude, that, that, like, that's the guy that can't, like, that, that's the guy that has the line named after her. I'm like, shit. <laughs> it's like, well, chalk that one up to me being an idiot because I have no idea. <laughs> Nathan, he just laughed. He's like, God, like, what are we going to do with this guy? <laughs> <laughs> I was all proud, like literally so freaking proud, like puffed up like a peacock, and Nathan just completely deflated me. Yep. <laughs> well, it says button uh button Canada and UK, there are tons compared to okay. I get that. I don't know. I don't know. Well, it says there's a, there's a lot more than you think being worked with, just mostly holdbacks. Oh. Maybe, maybe. Exotics is MJ's pricey. You know what? Like, I think part of the reason VPI is where like so many people do work it. If you go and you see a snake, you you line up three Exantics. VPI be make VPI cheaper, make TSK the middle ground, and make say MJ the the higher end one. Which one's somebody the average person? What are they going to think to go with? They're going to go with the one, if they all look the same, they're going to go with the cheaper one, which I think is kind of like, I think that's why some of these lines go the way that they go. Yeah. Like, I mean, as you look on Morph Market at TSK stuff, like some of the prices on that TSK stuff, it's like, holy crap. Mm -hmm. I was just looking on it yesterday and I'm there going, it's like, Jesus, like some, like the prices were off the freaking wall and Granted, I, I bought some stuff here earlier in the year that I thought that's freaking pricey. But you know what? It was they, they were so freaking worth it. Like that leopard exantic head uh clown girl that I got, she yeah. just shut and it was just like, My god, you were the best investment I've made snake wise. <laughs> like she yeah. just freaking rocks. But you can go and you find the VPI version, and it's gonna be hundreds of dollars cheaper. Mm -hmm. So it's just kind of like uh like I don't know. I think sometimes a lot of people go with stuff because they just think it's going to be move easier and the price is cheaper. So that's what they go with. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'm talking out my ass though too. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> let's get back. To, actually, let's run a sponsor ad and then we'll get back to you, Taylor. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Can't find that missing piece of your breeding project. Hit up Triforce Morphs. They've been in the industry for 10 years and counting. They're working heavily with clown pides, hypo clowns, hypo pides, along with lace, citron, and the matter project. Can't let out the fact that they have crested geckos as well. Trust, respect, and integrity. That's the Triforce way.
Are you ready to take it to the next level? Then check out DTMG Pythons. Danny is best known for his awesome clown ball python projects. This year's focus is confusion, hurricane, and disco inferno clowns. He also specializes in high-end crested gecko morphs such as Exantic, Lily White, and Exantic Lily Whites, along with the Deadpool line of gargoyle geckos. Check out his morph market and Instagram, DTMG Pythons. Just buy it. All right, now I saw Taylor pull something out while the ads were going. So let's see what you got hiding there behind the camera. So one of my brain cells started working. Another thing that I'm I'm excited about for this season is a project that my dad actually asked me to get into, and that's the micro scale. So this girl is the dangest thing. I never would have thought a snake would feel like a basketball, but that's like exactly what she feels like. But. So, isn't all right? Explain the micro scale because isn't micro scale just like scaleless, or is so, it literally like l the scales are just smaller? Yep, they're they're smaller. Okay. Yep, it's really bizarre, honestly. Um, but yep. So if I breed her, I think to either another micro scale, or I think even with just a um, like scaleless head. I think then you can get the full scale list, but I don't know. I don't know yet if I want to go that route. But she's sitting. I said she's probably about girl. Yeah, she's sitting. I think at about thirty millimeters right now, so she's she's thick. <laughs> yeah, but no, that's a random no. one that I'm excited for. Now I'm gonna go out on a limb here, and I think you like pinstripe a little bit. A, a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. I mean, what is it about pins? Because there's, in all honesty, like it doesn't. I don't think there's that many. Like, I think pinstripe is one of those old genes that not a, that gets overlooked. Some. So, mm. what about pinstripe drive? Like, drives you to love it so much? I don't really know. I I have a lot of pinstripe and I have a lot of banana, and there's just something about the two. Like, I love the bananas because of the colors, but I think for the pinstripes, it's just the pattern like it's reduced but it's busy and I, I don't know it's just one of those weird like i'm nuts that's <laughs> well i think it was uh jeff and angie there from celtic balls they threw acid into pinstripe Ooh. and that surprised the hell out of me with what that literally looked like a monsoon it was like the poor man's freaking monsoon it looked fantastic Damn. Um, so yeah, that'll give you an idea. <laughs> yeah. but I, like, I think like sometimes those older genes get overlooked mm -hmm. and they, you know, everybody's out for these newer cool things. It's like, you know what? There's still a lot to be done with the older stuff with the newer stuff that's coming in. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. Funny game it says micro equals mini, scaleless equals no scale. See, I, the micro scales though, they always look like they had like no scales, like the scaleless. So that's why, that's why I asked. That's why I asked. I've <laughs> never worked, held anything as far as a micro scale. Yeah, it's it's creepy. It's like holding just a football. Like they're, they definitely feel different. That's so weird. Mm -hmm. So weird. <laughs> Let's see here. We got some other people going off here. Uh, Tara says, back to the basics. Uh, James says, poor man, Monsoon, you got my attention. Yeah, I mean, if you throw acid into pinstripe, it does some crazy shit. Definitely some crazy shit. Uh, Gecko Gardening says, pinstripe was made by, Bri by Brian. Why am I tongue twisting that? Brian Barcheck, legendary guy for the industry. Gecko gardening. This is Taylor. I don't know if you just jumped in here or not, but Taylor was actually very, very close to Brian. So, and you said pinstripe. The first thing you got from him was a pinstripe, correct? Banana. A banana. Banana. Yep. Okay. Yep. Ooh, uh, speaking of though, Brian and pinstripe. Let's see if she's in blue. She's not. This is Warren's princess. She was actually funny because we went there to pick her up 
and thankfully I looked in the bag before we walked out because I had the wrong snake. <laughs> um, but so this girl, oh, she's got some stuck shit on her head. That's attractive. Um, I want to say she's a pinstripe lesser cypress and something else. Hold on. I can't read. <laughs> I was going to say, that's not just pinstripe. Uh, oh, black pastel. So black pastel, pinstripe, lesser cypress. Oh, wow. But she just that's made you think of like an Aztec blanket almost. Yeah. That's freaking awesome. So she'll be ready to roll this year, I think. So that's exciting. I just thought about her. <laughs> That's a beautiful snake, Taylor. Thank you, thank you. Now, what what direction are you to, to planning on taking, like, your clown projects? Because everybody wants to go different directions with clowns. Yeah. What direction are you looking forward to going? Um, I mean, I'm kind of all over the place. Um, I've, I've really kind of fallen in love with the, like, the clown pied... And then getting like the orange dream and that kind of stuff in there. Um, Cause I think, let me think of what he is. So I have two that are um, either hets or visual, depending on which one it is that are um, clown pied. And then they're both um, cinnamon pastel, which, um, and then orange dream. So, I'm excited to get those guys rolling and see get some super orange dream, maybe, and see how that looks in the clown pied. Oh, that'll be super OD clown pied. That'll be freaking beautiful looking. Mm -hmm. Like there's oranges that you should get out of that. That'll be freaking nuts. Yup. Yup. Mike so, says that you want a highway OD clown. I do. He stole one from me, but now it's gonna be my baby daddy. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny so so basically you want to take your clown stuff towards the bright side then you know or do you yeah. okay. I a little bit um i've got a couple that i'm gonna take them um, more to the dark side a little bit um but we'll see they're kind of down the road just because they're all hats for the most part okay. so That'll be a little ways down, but I kind of, I like a mix of everything. I've got a lot of bright, a lot of dark, a little bit of everything, except the expensive stuff. <laughs> well, you know what, though? Like, you can take, I mean, you can make the expensive stuff if you got the ingredients. It just takes sure. you a little bit longer sometimes. Yeah. Like, I know I found, like, a lot of my stuff, I started off more towards the bright side of everything. And I'm slowly, like, I'm always doing, like, a 180 now. Like, I'm starting to really think, it's like, you know what? I really, really love the darker side of a lot of this shit. Mm -hmm. So, the new pickup I did get this weekend, you guys are going to have to wait for the video to drop. But it definitely goes in the dark direction. <laughs> um, this thing is nuts. But, uh, it's yeah, like, I'm really starting to really starting to go more towards the dark direction with everything i'm even trying to like i don't even know i mean i guess the, my the, my clown stuff that i have going on this year is still kind of half bright but i mean i'm gonna be starting at I, all the exantic stuff it's i'm taking that a very dark direction yep yeah so no. dark i'm i'm addicted to blackhead so this is Ooh. one of my girls she's um from uh, City Balls over kind of by you. Okay. Uh, so she's a GHI Mojave um, blackhead, I think, and then Het VPI. But she just, she's a pretty thing. Also, a say, one. <laughs> did you just, all right, did you just post a picture of her on Instagram? Because I had a blackhead GHI Mojave come across my feed. I honestly like don't today. Know. <laughs> oh, wasn't today. I might okay. have in the last week if I remember right, but 
Well, it, it might have. I mean, it could. It might have come across my feed today, though, even though it was from last week. True. But I was gonna say because, like, the odds of you saying that exact combo <laughs> and me have just seeing it. I know I liked it because I thought that's a freaking gorgeous snake. Mm. But I couldn't remember if it was that I saw it that it said you because a lot of times when I'm flipping through IG, I'm just I don't even see who it is. I just oh that's freaking awesome. Like move yep. on. <laughs> Yeah, but no, we've got we've got a lot of the blackhead stuff from City Balls. Probably a third of our collection is actually from them. Um, oh, okay. I adore those guys. I see the super the super blackhead stuff. Um, Don and Christine have some of that, and they have, and maybe this is something you were interested in too. They have a is God. I should have got her, and I didn't. And John and Christine, if either of you are watching this, I'm still debating on that girl. Um, but they did have two of her. So, but she was a super blackhead, Mojave. I think there was yellow belly in there, and maybe red stripe, or maybe it was a pos red stripe. Like this thing was jet black. The pattern was super tiny on the sides but it was like very jumbled up pattern on the sides but floating so it's basically right across the middle of the bike thing was freaking gorgeous and it's like i i i'm kind of half kicking myself in the ass for not just getting it so maybe i'm gonna have to go back and get one of them too but yep. if blackhead excites you taylor hit them <laughs> up on that one be like it was it was a beautiful freaking snake. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, what direction do you want to take your pied stuff then? <clears throat> or, I guess the other thing is, do you like high weight or low weight pieds? I I tend to lean more towards the high weight. Oh, okay. I know, I know. <laughs> um, but it depends on the colors. If it's something that's got super nice color, then I like it to be low white. Um, okay. But like I've got a pinto pied. So, of course, she's just brown blotches. And I'm like, eh, I can do with just more white on you. <laughs> but then we get others that are like, all right, I like that. I like that. We need we need more. <laughs> so. Now, do you have you produced any pieds yet? Yes. Um, last year we had our first pied clutch. It was just um, the pinto pied to a banana pied. And okay. um, actually we had five eggs, I think. One of them went bad right at the end and I had a feeling it would. Um, it was fully developed, but like a quarter of the size of all the others. So he, oh, I just, man. it was, it was a boob egg and it was super tiny. So I was like, ah. <laughs> um, but I do have one left from that. And um, the male I got just as a banana pied, and he ended up throwing a female banana pied. And I was like, okay. Like, and he came from Will Banks, so I would have assumed that if they knew he was a female maker, they would have sold him as such. Um, well, I have heard, though, different. I mean, 99% of the time, that's correct. But I have heard because I I know I even watched Cusco do it a few times. Like he'd sex something, and it was supposed to be a male maker. I'll I'll just say I don't know if it's male or female maker, but it it would throw out one of the opposite sex of what it was supposed to be. So it's just kind of like all right, well the rule applies like ninety percent, ninety nine percent of the time. But every once in a while, you get this hiccup in the system. And <laughs> yep. yep, I love Cusco. He is such a doll. <laughs> um. I'd love to meet him in person. I would yeah. absolutely love to hang out with him in person. Yeah, he's a sweet. He's he's another one that we met through Brian, of course. And um, just every time we go somewhere, and the Blue Line group that went to Tinley last fall can attest, we can walk around and he'll see us and come over and hug us. And it's it's just like this is kind of cool, like to just be a little a little nobody almost, and have some of these big guys that are just like everyone knows them and they know you by name and it's like i could i could deal with this <laughs> that would be a cool feeling i agree yep. Have you show us that mail oh <laughs> i know it just, so her it's her mail that was the banana pied okay let's see 
I know, big guy. Oh, look at the paradoxing. Or is that is that paradoxing, or is that just a big blob of... I think it's paradoxing. It's getting a little bit bigger as he ages, but okay. he's a super cool I wasn't cool sure guy. if it was paradox or if it's just... Freckles. The black scales decided to cluster right there. Mm -hmm. Yep, he's had it since he was young, and it just kind of grows with him, so... But he's a cool dude. Hold, he's holding this color really nice, too. Like, I think our banana from Brian turned mostly yellow and brown within two years. And I think this guy's three this year. And he still has quite a bit of orange throughout, which is impressive to me. I was going to say, my pastel banana girl, she's got very little of this, the uh, speckling going on. Really? But... Like she's got beauty, her colors have stayed so well. Now, the GHI Mojave banana that I produced my first year, she is still to this day probably the most drop gorgeous banana I've ever seen in my life. Like, she has kept her pinky lavenders, even to the, like that's all she is. She's like that pinky lavender color, her whole body, a hue of orange where the alien heads would be. And she's got that creamy, like, that's the only way to really. You know, that my eyes can see it anyway. It's like a yeah. very creamy dorsal to her. But, like, I don't even think there's one solid black scale on her. She's got a couple little specks on a scale here and there. But she does not have a full black scale at all. That's cool. But she's she is bad. She actually should be giving me a clutch of eggs this year. She's at, like, 30. What did I measure her at? 38 mil. Ooh, so, nice. She, I think she's got like five or six, if I remember correctly. And she was paired to a, a black pewter leopard, black pewter leopard het DG. So there's going to be some crazy sh <laughs> shit mm. coming out of that collection. <laughs> For I'm sure. sure. We're going to be hitting up the guys in the group chat. Be going, okay, all right, guys, let's gather around. What the hell did I make? <laughs> right. <laughs> That's going to be me. Stuff. That's going to be me with this first clutch I've got if she ever stinking drops the eggs. I've been trying to breed her for two years now, and she reabsorbed on me the first two years. Oh. And so I was like, maybe it's, maybe it's the males. So I've had her with four different males. And so I'm just like, oh, if she retained anything, I'm going to be so lost. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back through here and see who all she got to see. Yep. So that'll be interesting <laughs> nathan here because we should all trust jeremy's eye nathan come on now man come on <laughs> Low blow. <laughs> I, I have great vision i just cannot see certain things okay man all right <laughs> i can see pink and lavender fine you throw the pink on top of some stone like some dry stone all right then we got some problems seeing that pink but without the stone we're good dude we're good <laughs> Gotta watch where we put the pink at. <laughs> uh, I tell you what, Taylor, that that he just man, he just hits me all the time. <laughs> I love you, bro. I love you. Uh, oh god, what was I gonna say now? <laughs> just a freaking guy derailed me. Um <laughs> Yeah, it's just drawing a blank on what I was going to ask you next. <laughs> so uh, let's just do this. What what projects do you want to get into in the future? Like what's one of the, like, you can even, it doesn't have to be just one gene. You can even a couple of genes if you want. But what are some of the genes that, that are out there that you're excited? Like, all right, we've got to add that in the near future. I think the biggest ones I've been looking at, and Charlie was a big push for, making me flip to the to the side of that um i like acid a lot i don't have any of that yet um and then stranger i think okay but i don't i don't know that i want to quite get into the monsoon game yet um See, i'm torn on monsoon mm -hmm. i'm so torn like i was watching nasty morphs 
video today going him going over uh i don't know if it's solely his clutch or if it's a pair a split clutch between him and billy i know sometimes they do that split stuff the two of them um but it's a monsoon clutch they hit like two visuals i think but like every monsoon combo i have seen looks the same mm -hmm. every single one it looks the copy paste copy paste i want some variety a little bit you know what i mean like i feel if it's copy paste all you're left to do with is color yeah and like i've seen monsoon pictures of monsoon clowns like the clown couldn't even really screw with the monsoon that much like monsoon's super freaking strong it surprised mm -hmm. the hell out of me yeah um then i saw the monsoon pied and that just didn't really do it for me like i was kind of like really let down about that i was expecting one thing and what i what i saw was not like i think the one i saw was like a very high white pot i'm like well hell <laughs> like, that was really not what i expected to see out of that yep. so i don't know i'm, I'm there with like i think it would I, everybody's gonna be shocked i think monsu would be badass and exantic but <laughs> i think that with everything <laughs> um, but there you're just messing with the color yeah but it's just I don't know. I don't. I want to see something that can actually change it a little bit. Maybe make some of that busyness like stripe it out. Like I don't know. Like I. I don't know what I want out of it. I just want something different with it. Yep. James says it would. It would be. I like it, but it's super busy and overpowering. It is very. Like, I would have put it on the level of overpowering with Spider, because mm -hmm. uh, how Spider kind of is just will take over a pattern and it takes a lot to break that that's how i vision that's kind of how i look at monsoon it's very strong like spider is yeah now that being said i love spider <laughs> i i do too i hate that it's got such a bad rap i know i freaking hate that yeah i i, I have a couple here and there at expos when i go and people are like oh i hate that it's spider though and so i, I just i'm like all right Sit down for a second. We're gonna we're gonna discuss this. <laughs> yep. Sit like, down. Let's it, let's talk this one out here. Yep. And usually by the end, like the last two that I had, they went ahead and bought them right then and there. They're like, oh, that doesn't that's not so scary. And I'm like, no, like it's just you just gotta know. And yeah. I hate it, they get so hated on. <laughs> oh, I do too. Like I've got, I I have a she's a. Vanilla Calibi, uh, heck clown, and she just ovulated. Actually, yeah, she ovulated Saturday morning when I was leaving for the show. Opened up the bin and she was puffed up like crazy. I was like, Yes, because she went to the Batman. So I know I'm kind of playing with fire a little bit there because of the spider and the spot nose. Yeah, we'll see how that goes, but. I'm thinking that the you know with the Batman that there's enough stuff there plus the other stuff with um the female maybe we can you know hit the odds that we don't hit that many spiders because I will say this that male out of his well damn it I can't all right never mind we're not gonna dive into what that male does <laughs> I can't tell you folks this shit yet damn YouTube <laughs> Just watch this week's video, folks. Just watch this week's video. That's all I got to say. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, like, I love my spider stuff. I've even got a she, Bumblebee Hat DG, and she's freaking phenomenal looking. Yeah. I did get rid of all my zebra bees. I never <laughs> thought I would get rid of my zebra bees, but I did. Um, kind of kicking myself in the ass for, for some of it, but at the same token, it's like, you know for what i'm going for they just kind of didn't they, they i wanted to say make them so that way I, you know that punch list yeah i've made them i mean i can still make them again i'm probably gonna end up selling the mail though here at some point because he's a bumblebee double head exantic clown once the new mail that i have gets everything figured out that male's gonna you know he's hopefully gonna go find a new home and a sire a whole bunch of phenomenal clutches for somebody else mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, I've never had problems with my spider stuff. I mean, I've even got a spider double head Xandy clown female sitting in the rack growing up. Yeah, I'm hoping she would have been up to size, but 
she for whatever reason kind of became a pain in the ass eater um she, she smashed food like crazy religiously and then just out of nowhere just poof <laughs> she just want, she just doesn't want to eat for now for whatever reason and she had follicles too which was the even more surprising part like she had follicles stopped eating and the last time i threw the ultrasound on her last month i think follicles were gone again it's like shit hate that <laughs> like, like she had like she was up around like 15 16 mil and then now they're gone yep. uh for ben balls what's going on thanks for tuning in bob allen says thoughts on wookie tsk or vpi bob tsk all the way the hell with vpi <laughs> and i don't know anything about wookie <laughs> other than they go <laughs> And yep. that will come back to haunt me. I know this. <laughs> uh, what are your What are your thoughts, Taylor, on that? either of those three? Oh, so I done that shit. <laughs> Gave Chris Ammo. Damn it. Yep. <laughs> yes, you did. Just up and down, I'd keep my ass straight. So I gave him nothing. I just did. It. Damn it. No, I like Wookie. Um, I don't have any. I don't have it. In my collection, I do like it though. Um, I like TSK more than VPI, but I have more VPI than I have TSK. <laughs> all right, now, all right, now, see, I didn't know you had a whole lot of v, that much more VPI. So, what do you like more about the TSK over the VPI? I think, or, just, what, or what have you noticed between the two? Because I don't have any VPI. So far, I haven't noticed a whole lot different because they're still mostly young. Um, but just in looking at pictures, I like the look of the adults of the TSKs a little bit more just because I feel like they stay a little more black and white sort of okay. rather than browning out. Um, I think the VPIs that I have, though, um, most of them are blackhead. So I think they'll end up staying. But uh, Gecko says ten out of ten. Ten out of ten. <laughs> I will say this, everybody: if you are close to o to Oaks on uh, what's the date of the Oaks show? May, May I don't know why I just forgot this. May the fourth, like it's the greatest day <laughs> in the world, folks. I don't know why I forgot that Oaks was on May the fourth. Uh, I should have remembered that because of what I'm doing anyway. Um, but come out to Oaks and see me. You won't be able to miss me. I promise. Like I will stay stick out like a sore thumb, not only because of the new displays, but just I'll stick out. Just come on out and say hi. <laughs> Uh, Kai, what's up, bro? Thanks for tuning in. Creative Genetics, what's going on? Sammy, wanted to say hi to you as well, my brother. Uh, Benji's tuning in from New Zealand again. What's up, Benji? Thanks for tuning in. Damn, everybody's falling in here now. All right, Fred, what's going on? Uh, catches this up. Uh, Mike says he can't wait to breed their Wookiee yellow belly clown to GHI Coral Glow. Nice. Uh, Effie, I got, if you look on my Instagram, like you'll I put sunglasses on before you go to my Instagram. I don't want to be sued for any eye damage or anything. Um, but if you go to my IG, there's pictures of my new setup for shows, my current setup anyway, uh, with my new ARS displays. But like I said, put on some sunglasses cause you are going to need them. <laughs> They're, they are a little on the bright side <laughs> there's no doubt about that uh, um, damn do they look good <laughs> yeah yes they do <laughs> uh, so all right what what were we talking about before we got derailed with the wookie tsk vpi thing um what were we on help I help know. <laughs> Charlie says he has leftover eclipse glasses for the next show. <laughs> Charlie, you need to sell those at the door, bro. <laughs> Black market right there. Um, 
Oh, uh, let me think. What were we just talking about? I, I feel I'm right there with you on like three brain cells. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm on autopilot after yesterday's show. Like I don't know why I'm so drained from that. Like mm. shows really like I feel like I need to have two days off after a show just mm. to get back to a state of normalcy. Yep. Um. <laughs> Oh God, Benji. Oh God. <laughs> Almost so what uh oh future projects. Okay, yes, that yes, that oh, we don't have. Yes. Thank you, Bob. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> Tell you what, I like sometimes like I feel like the second I think I've got this whole live thing ironed out, it's like, all right, I got my head in the game, I'm good. I don't need to have the show notes stuff, write things down really. Because, like, sometimes I don't want to say it's rinse and repeat, but, like, I feel as though I've been doing it long enough now that I can get off of the, the, the crutches, you know, I can walk and run on my own. And then I, I hit moments like tonight where it's like the lights are on, someone's thinking about coming home, but we're not, just not quite home yet. So thank you, Bob. Yes, future projects. <laughs> <sighs> So, um, God, yeah. What is there anything else that you want to do as far as with other adding new things in now? You know, I think other than kind of those two, I'm kind of at a standstill for a little bit okay. for now. I'm sure something is going to catch my eye because it always does. Um, <laughs> what about like, does it like has zebra caught your eye? or anything yet like i'm still kind of there's a few recesses out there that have caught my eye um try i'm not gonna lie, try stripe as simple as it looks look up a try stripe exantic that yes. is a thing of beauty there's like two of them and tsk on morph market mm -hmm. what i have when i've seen try stripes I'm like eh, okay you know it, it it's a snake with three stripes you throw that sucker into Exantic and you just lit the fuse on a freaking stick of dynamite, basically. That thing is insane looking. The yeah. blacks, the whites, and that super dark. Oh my God, that's a beautiful freaking snake. Yeah. So, needless to say, <laughs> I think at some point we're going to be adding Tri Stripe here. I, I got to, I need one, I need to, to do my expansions, but Tri Stripe I know is on my radar for that. Yep, I had some tri stripe, but I ended up just because I was trying to narrow down my rein myself in a little bit. Um, so I ended up selling them, but I do, <clears throat> I see myself getting back into that. I was gonna say, and now, like, it seems like it's gaining more traction. So, it like, I don't know what the prices were like when you bought into it originally, but uh, depending on how they were, I mean, they went up immensely. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> A creative, yes, I did get my Orbeez. Uh, I'm waiting to throw my first clutch on Orbeez, though. Actually, wait. No, I do have my first clutch on Orbeez already. I got new egg trays, though, too. So I do want to say this. Nathan from Infinite Possible Python sent us in the group chat a link to, I think it's Reptile Depot or something like that. They have Lugardi egg trays. They look like the Dragon Hatch trays. And they're very good price. I think I got... I. Like I, I'm a stickler for spending money on shit like that. If I've already got something that works for, I forget what it was for 12, but I could not pass the deal up on them, especially because they came in green too. That was a big selling point. So um, I got a set of these trays. I was in very impressed with them. So I'm anxious to set the car new, the first carpet clutch on them or the second carpet clutch on them. But yes, uh, I do have the Orbeez. They are working very well so far with the first carpet clutch. I've got like three other tubs set up right now with Orbeez in them. Everything's ready to rock and roll. Uh, very pleased with how, they, how it's been so far. They they haven't dried out or anything. I mean, the water level still where, where it needs to be. Everything's going great with them. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, let's see here. Let's see. Let's see. Steven, what's up? Steven and Courtney, the Vioth and Snakes. What's going on? Gecko says zebra is dope. See it. 
I like it, but then I've been hearing that it's basically the same thing as uh, I'm drawing a blank on what the other. Th uh, I, I'm really on like three. I I might even be on two brain cells tonight, Taylor. <laughs> um, Zebra is the same supposedly as something else that's way freaking cheaper. I'm drawing a blank on what it is. Uh -huh. Supposedly. I'm not going to say one way or the other that it is or isn't, but supposedly the word on the street. Um, but so uh, I'm kind of curious to see how that happens. Mm -hmm. uh, Funny Gaming says they want tri stripe but can't find much on the Canadian side. Okay. All right. Uh, Charlie, what is up, bro? I don't know if I gave you a shout out. I know you were offering for the uh, Eclipse glasses, though, but thanks very much for tuning in, bro. But Carissa, Bohemian Exotics, what's going on? Uh, let's see here. Yes, Gecko Gardening, Orbeez to incubate for as far as substrate instead of using dirty perlite or vermiculite. Orbeez is the way of the future. I will have a video coming out shortly. Um, I don't know. It's going to be a couple weeks. I'm pretty sure you guys probably want to see me uh, on this week's video is clutch number one being cut. You guys probably want to see if I get bit or not pulling a carpet python clutch. So that should be next week's video, provided this girl down here in the back actually lays. <laughs> um, and maybe we'll do the new uh, setup for incubating eggs with Orbeez uh, coming up here in like maybe three weeks. Nice. But I will say this. I'm very happy with it. Nathan, thank you very much. Yes, right there. Reptile Supply Co. Yes. Freaking like... Yeah, I, I was very impressed with them. Very, they even come with like little clips that you can like use to help pull the tray out of the out of the tub. So really nice, McKinsey. Yes, that's it. Thank you, Stephen. Yes, McKinsey and Bob. Also, Bob beat Stephen to it. But yes, thank you guys, <laughs> Bob and Stephen. Thank you, create man. Everybody, look, see, everybody's on top of this shit, and I'm just like, <laughs> oh, like. On autopilot, Steven says he's seen offspring from a zebra to McKinsey pairing. And if someone told me they were visual zebras, I would believe them. Okay. <laughs> so uh, that to me there says that basically they are the same freaking thing then. Who knows? Genetic test it. I'm sure there's something. Somebody will come out with something and Charlie or RGI will come up with a test for it. I have no doubt. Yeah, see, Chris got Chris. Didn't you get blue? I think Chris got blue ones. Oh, nice. I, I like. I swear, like Nathan dropped that link in our PA group chat on Facebook. I think everybody that was in that chat freaking jumped on that link and ordered trays right then and there. The Reptile Supply Co. was probably like, "What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Why do we have all these orders to PA and like?" One lump sum, basically. But yeah, it was all Nathan's fault. He caused us all to spend money. <laughs> um, Let me think here. What, what are some of, like, I guess I never asked you, like, well, you did say you, you're, you're right around 80 snakes, roughly. How many clutches are you anticipating for this year? So for this year, I'm hoping to be up to about, I think it was 18. Oh, shit. Now, what did you have last year? Last year was two. Okay, so you you like you went from like first to sixth gear like right away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, the year, be... the year before last I had one clutch. Last year I had two, and this year everybody grew up, so we're going full force. <laughs> That's freaking awesome! Now, are you are you slightly scared about going from that big of a leap? Because like for me, it's for us, it's my first year was four the second year was three third year was eight so i kind of like had that slow build up and now this year i'm looking at like 15 so like this year i'm like doubling and i'm kind of like it's like all right i've got this i've got this yeah. but then when i'm starting to see like ultrasound and it's kind of becoming reality that okay we actually might hit like like a realistically 15 uh clutch year and they're like okay I've got to get the room expand. Like now, I'm starting to like slightly freak out a little bit. It's like, all right, I've got to get the room expanded now. Like I've got to get a mini one thirty bought. Like I'm starting. Like I'm starting to get a little on edge. Yeah, 
I, I'm not really all that scared. I don't think, I mean, my, my first clutch was a absolute hot mess and it taught me a lot of things. Um, last year went very smoothly other than one hatchling. Um, but I think we have him sorted now. Um, so the, I, I feel like the first two seasons prepped me for this year. Um, my biggest, probably the only thing I'm scared about is space because I'm in a 10 by 10 room. Um, oh, okay. You're, that's about almost what I'm in. I'm, mine's 14 by 12. So, yeah, <laughs> I'm kind of working in the same space as you. Yep. So, I thank, thanks to Brian and Lori. I have all the racks I need. It's just how do I Tetris them in here <laughs> <laughs> so that I can not feel like everything's falling in on me, but I can still fit everybody. Yeah. But now how many like, hacking racks do you have? Oh, they so I have two of the just like PVC that fit like 10 shoebox tubs. Okay. Um, those are what I started with. And then from Brian and Lori, I think we got four of the hatchling racks that have like 96 tubs each. Oh, okay. So you're all right, you're you're set, you're you're definitely set then for babies. You're good. Yep. Though. Yep. So it's it's really just a space thing because then I've got the 28 quart tub racks. I think we got like 15 of those from Brian and Lori. So for sub adults and stuff, we're good there. It's just it's a space thing. <laughs> I I get it. I mean, because you're just I mean, for right now, anyway, you're just breeding the balls, correct? Yeah. Yep. OK. See, like my thing is I've got the balls and I've got the carpets. Now, baby wise, it's fine because I can keep the baby carpets and the same racks as the balls. I just put a little bit of like construction netting in there, gives them their little perching. They're they're happy, they're dandy, they're good. Yep. Now that there's once they start getting that some size to them, then I've gotta go to the four by two by twos, and that's where I start running into room issues, mm -hmm. which is the big kicker. I don't want to say kicker, but the big kick in the ass to get the expansion done because it's like I've got two sitting in the rack that are growing up quickly. Um, I want to add a whole nother breeding and a whole nother pair this year of ivories if I can come across them. I, I, I did get I have my feelers out for a pair from a guy uh, after yesterday. Nice. So I might be set on that. <laughs> But like I'm looking at adding a like maybe two pair two pairs of uh, carpets this year, so I'm kind of like I'm one of those guys that likes to be a couple years out thinking you know. Plus I need all the space for the babies. Yeah, like what? Yeah. It, it, the, the, there's a lot to go into when you start thinking about space and how to go about placing everything. I I get you on that one. Yeah. And, and I'm hoping um, the nice part about this year, just from ultrasounding is so far, everyone's kind of going in twos. So like I have these first two that are going to be laying any day now. And then I have two others that are like right at the 35 to 37 ish. And like, just everybody's in pairs for some reason. That's, um, that's not a bad thing. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm just kind of like, all right, I mean, I can do two at a time. That'll let me get the first one sold and, you know, but I'm hoping by the end of this year to have moved into an actual building um, okay. because we're um, working on something on husband's side of employment. So if that all works out, then um, there's going to be an upstairs that doesn't get used. So Ooh. I'm hoping to take that over. Now, is it, as, is it close to where you're at, or are you going to have a little bit of a drive for that, then? It's probably 15 minutes from here. Okay, that's not bad. No. See, that, that would be my biggest thing, not mm -hmm. having the snakes on the premises. Like I, I literally enjoy just coming down here, vegging out, doing whatever. Like It's peaceful. It makes me happy. If I, if I As long as I have them... Because my future plans are to, you know, get out of this place eventually, which it'll suck after dumping all this money into building these rooms. But to get into another place where I've got enough land where I can build like an actual 
mini facility. Like mm-hmm. nothing as far, nothing to the extent of like Justin or what Philly's got. Yeah. But some a nice little facility where I can have the snakes. I can have like a little section for rats. I have yeah. like maybe a tiny little shipping department thing where I've just got all my shipping shit in. So that way I, I'm very organized in that aspect. Yeah. But just something at least on the property so that way it's peace of mind. Because I would I would worry is someone breaking in, stealing my shit, you know, like that would just drive me nuts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is so so in in talking of doing all that, I'm like, you know, I honestly think I don't think I'd move everybody. I think I'd do like half and half. That way, like if anything happened and there was a fire one place or the other, I at least it's still true. have something that That's I can keep true. going with. Um, but as we're looking to move out of this house, it's, um, I'm making it very apparent that, um, we either need an extra bedroom or a massive basement that I can just enclose for myself. So, um, that way I can just have everybody at home and go from there. I'm the same way, Mike, I'd leave work and I would just go to the shop and be there all night. And <laughs> I, I I have a feeling that 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 would end up being me too. Now the only plus side is is that Hadley loves the snakes, so mm-hmm. that would be some a really good father daughter time spent. I'm sure Hudson will be uh, up my butt as with it too because he screams at me when I don't let him come down to the snake room as it is already, and he's only one. <laughs> so. <laughs> I mean, I should hopefully have some good uh, show hands to help me out here soon when it comes to the snakes and at shows and stuff. Yeah. Um, but I, I think that, like, if I can have that and have the kids there, mm-hmm. Kara's probably going to be happy that all three of us would be out of the house. So she'll probably go do whatever the hell she wants. Yo. But I think I would probably, like, literally basically live in the little breeding facility thing. Like, that would just be where I'm at. Yep, exactly. What's up, Jim? Thanks for tuning in. H&H Pythons, what's going on? Thanks for tuning in. I do believe you are a new face. <laughs> Trying to think if I've seen you in the chat. I don't think I have. Thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, GCG Reptiles, Casey, what's going on? Everybody, if you're new, please hit that subscribe button. Please make sure you guys hit that thumbs up. When we end this, I want to see... I mean, we've been bouncing. We are all, we're all but up to 40 people at one point. I want to see like 39 likes, please. And let me see 39 likes. I greatly appreciate it. All right. H&H is in Michigan, too. All right. Awesome. Now, are you close with H&H, Taylor? Not. So we haven't officially met yet, but we have okay. a mutual friend um, that um, we didn't know was a mutual friend until recently. And then it was kind of like, I've, I've always seen the... Um, I'm blanking on her name because I'm on few brain cells, but (laughs) so I've always seen H and H and I'm like, Oh, that's, she's got nice stuff. And, um, one day our mutual friend was over at our rat shed and she said something and we're like, wait, you went to her house yesterday? (laughs) And she's like, yeah, we're good friends. And I'm like, interesting. (laughs) 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 So we're hoping to meet up here soon. Finally. Um, if we can make it happen. So oh, awesome. Well, I know it would have been it would be bad ass. Um, if you were closer and you could make the whole barbecue thing I've got going on. But everybody actually now that I think about it, everybody, if you do want to come to the breeder barbecue, July 6th. Let me just double check that date. I do think it's July 6th. <laughs> At least I hope it's July 6th. I think that's what I've been telling everybody. Um, uh, yes, July 6th. <laughs> Uh, just hit me up on Instagram. I am working on a head count so that way I know how much uh, pork to buy because I'm doing, instead of having it catered, I am going to uh, be doing my own like pulled pork barbecue stuff. Everybody brings, hopefully everybody can bring a little something of a dish to help, you know, feed everybody because there's a decent amount of people coming. Uh, but... Uh, we're gonna have some live entertainment. Adam from Proper Royals will be down or over. He's flying out. Um, live entertainment. It's a good time. Very good time. Everybody loves it. Uh, it grew to be something I did not expect. 
but uh it is ten dollars per person the only reason i'm doing that is to help one i've got to fly adam out because basically i'm doing it yes he's a breeder but he is the entertainment so i'm helping fly him out he's you know we got a thing going on there with that uh i've got to get some like porta potties and stuff like that brought in but everything after covering the, some of the costs that i need to help you know ease my burden on a little bit there from throwing it is going to us arc so I, i've wanted to, i wanted to turn it into something good you know it's a good fun hangout um oh god mike, mike said fly me out i'll strip like <laughs> i do have neighbors bro um i don't really like my neighbors that much due to their dogs <laughs> um, but I don't know if I hate them that much, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> and plus we've got this guy here. He like, he can do that. He'll get, he'll start truffle shuffling. Maybe Chris, that's an idea. Mm -hmm. We'll get you, we'll build you a little stage. I'll get some pallets or something. We'll build you a little stage, Chris, and you can truffle shuffle for dollar bills for us arc. <laughs> <laughs> we might just come up with a good a good fundraiser here yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh god <laughs> oh god <laughs> if he's just fly me out bring a pole for <laughs> Oh God, this is gonna go downhill quick now with this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Chris. Um, yeah, but yeah, everybody, if you do, if you would like to attend, hit me up on Instagram. Just let me know how many people, so that way I, I know roughly how much to buy for food and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, it's so it's been a good time. We set up cornhole, all that stuff. Just good hanging out, just talking shop. Even if we don't talk shop, just hanging out getting to know other people this year i will say this last year i found myself in the snake room like the whole party i absolutely felt terrible because there were people that came from some far distances from some far distances let me get that out right um that i didn't really get to spend a whole lot of time with at the party and i felt freaking terrible so this year i will not be doing snake room tours if you want to see the snakes you either got to come earlier or you got to stay till the majority of people leave. And then we can go down and hang out in the snake room. But uh, yeah, I, I want to get to enjoy people this time. I felt really bad. And God, poor Adam, I was told he was like wanted to cheers me like five different times. And every time he went to do it, I was gone. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like, you know what? It's like, I guess I really was gone for like the whole barbecue. I felt really bad. <laughs> so, but yeah, if anybody who does want to come to the breeder barbecue, just let me know here in lancaster pa um hit me up on ig and i'll get you whatever you you know head count and whatever other info you do need so uh just let me know thanks uh let's run our last sponsor ad taylor we'll go here for a little bit yet but damn it's almost 10 o'clock we've almost been live for two hours holy shit <laughs> All right, here's the last sponsor ad folks Lucas Landon Royals produces some truly high caliber snakes. Kai has been breeding ball pythons for six seasons and counting. He's working toward multi-recessive combos such as DG Clown, Hypo Clown Pied, Sunset Candy Pied, and DG Exantic Pied. He's working with several other species of snakes, but next year he's going to start breeding Boa Imperators, and he also has a small group of Super Dwarf Retics. So be on the lookout for some Super Dwarf Cow Retics. Become a Royal at Lucas Landed Royals. If you want to use the best reptile record keeping and tracking software on the market today, scan the QR code or click our partnership link in the description down below for a free 30-day trial of Husbandry Pro. I promise you, you will not regret it. Uh, Upstate says Amish country, baby. Yes, it is. Well, it's very much Amish country, but surprisingly, there's only like two Amish farms remotely near me, and I never see any Amish while I'm out on the road. Now, if I go down more to the southern end of Lancaster County, uh, where I grew up, like there's like a line. You hit that line, and it's like all you've come across is Amish buggies, and I start swearing. It's like, okay, this is why I freaking moved a little bit farther north to get away from this crap. Literally, away from the crap, because when you're driving and you, there's 
horse and buggies all over the road and there's horse crap and you get it on your vehicle and you just washed it. Ugh. <laughs> I always, my grandmother always y used to yell and say that the Amish need to put diapers on their horses. And me being a kid, I try to it's like you can't do that to a horse, man. You know, you, it's a horse. As I grew up and I got my own cars and took, you know, all that time cleaning them, I now understand why my dad wanted to put diapers on horses now. Because <laughs> I agree now, damn it. Oh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, Stan says Chris and Ken can have. <laughs> normally, uh, Ken normally does come up for the barbecue. So, Stan, that just means you got to come up here and you can see it here, man. <laughs> uh, can we, Mike says, can we visit the Amish? I want to come. Yeah, dude, you could go visit the Amish. I don't care what you do. Like, there's literally, like, like I said, Two Amish farms within a mile. Well, either direction you go, you can run into an Amish farm. Let's say come to, uh, come to our house. We'll take you for a buggy ride. <laughs> you know what? I like we used to my dad had a carriage. And I used to joke with him. I was like, Dad, why are like why are we pretending that we're like I was little. But I was like, Dad, why are we pretending that we're Amish when like we we have cars? Like, like <laughs> why are we doing this? Because it's fun, boy. It's fun. Don't you like Oh yeah, Dad. It's just fun to go for like a ride or in a carriage around the block, basically. Now a, our block was a couple miles, but it took like half the day to get around the freaking block. <laughs> like yeah, it is real fun, Dad. <laughs> right. But, oh yeah, it good old times. Good times. Good times. Uh oh, Effie says you guys have mini horses. Mm-hmm. We've got there's a lot of miniature ponies around here for some reason. Like a lot, like the all the Amish have mini mini ponies, and then they hook little wagons up to them. Like literally, like little red rider red rider wagons. They hook up to them. And it's just like you see it going down the road. You're just like, what the hell? <laughs> it's funny as hell. Yep. Oh god! And then this guy, he wants to. God, that's the last thing you need, Chris. You would. Photoshop all sorts of crap on that poor little horse, and I could I could see the memes now, man. I could see the memes now. Come on up, Chris. We'll hook you up. We'll hook you up. We got many cows too. <laughs> <laughs> he can be a little cowboy for us. Oh God, no, God, Taylor, don't do that. He'll pull out the ass with caps and everything. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that that uh chris don't no if you go to do that dude do not take any pictures please and taylor do not let him break out the chaps <laughs> i'll try i'll try <laughs> nathan <laughs> oh god so since we're, we're almost at that point, Taylor, I've been trying to keep everything around two hours long. Plus, I'm sure you've got some things you want to do on top of probably number one sleep because you said you didn't get any freaking sleep um, like you were hoping. But what are like what are some of the big struggles you've had? Because I feel like everybody always hears success, success, success. What are some of the struggles you've had as far as breeding or deciding on directions, building foundations. What have been some of the things you've kind of struggled with as far as becoming a breeder? You know, I'm down to one brain cell now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, I think the biggest thing that I struggled with oh, was probably trusting a female too much. That's okay. Funny. But um, because I, for my first, very first clutch, I bought a proven breeder from uh, Nerd, figuring she would be, you know, a pro. She knows what she's doing. I don't have to worry about her. And, um, 
I noticed that she was trying to get in the water a lot more. So I was like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll give you a little bath, right? And she was in it a lot. And then she had her clutch. And then that whole clutch was a hot mess. And after talking to some people, they said, yeah, she probably cooled herself down way too much. Oh. And I was like, okay. So um, nobody gets baths anymore. They just kind of have their water dishes and that's that. Um, that was kind of my big thing. And that was a big learning point because I have three left from those 10 eggs. Two of them have no eyes. One still is being assist fed. Oh, and shit. that was a jacked up clutch. Yep. Every single one in there. there were, okay. So of the 10, only one came out perfect. So aptly, I named her Miss Perfect. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I have her. And she's growing like a weed. And then one of my ones with no eyes, he's growing like a weed too. He's going to be one of my education animals. And then the other one, I'm, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to keep putting her through it much longer. Um, but uh, all the other babies, they were all alive. And it was the freakiest thing. Cause some of them would just have bottom jaws and then like it would stop where their eyes would be. And you'd see their little tongues flicking in the egg. And I'm like, no, you sh you shouldn't be alive. Like, right. so it was none of them had I like it. Just it was so creepy, and I'm like, yeah, I'm not. You're just gonna do it the right way and not cool yourself down too much. Um, so that was a lesson learned. And last that year I had no problems. I I mean I've heard of nightmare clutches. Like I had what I consider a nightmare clutch for me, but. My nightmare clutch has nothing on that. Like my nightmare clutch was basically all slugs except for two good eggs. Now that was actually last season. That was like the first time I hit a speed bump breeding. As other than you know your normal one reabsorb here or there, mm -hmm. um, that was the actual first speed bump I had. It was like the whole clutch was basically slugs. Um, two eggs were good. One full term cut. Uh, one baby was completely fine. The other one looked like Chris's logo, basically. I mean, it was the hen tails went out one one side and the other, and it was fused in the middle. The rest of it was fused in the middle. I mean, it literally looked like Chris's logo almost. Um, and it's just like I, I've never like I've heard kinked, you know, deformed stuff not fused together like that mm -hmm. i mean that was an extreme i was just like holy crap so yeah. that was that was like that was a tough i mean i didn't like i said it wasn't a nightmare clutch like yours but that was a tough pill for me to swallow mm -hmm. let alone you having to deal with a whole clutch yep. of stuff like that that man yeah we ended up euthanizing i think half of them like right away because there was just some of them were fused kind of like yours and this they were kinked beyond belief um so we ended up with five that the two made it probably about three months and then they were just failure to thrive i mean they had cleft palates and all sorts of it was i was glad to not deal with that last year <laughs> oh i bet now you said that you were assist feeding one still mm-hmm how long have you been assist feeding that one? Two years almost. Two years in October. Okay. And that's, I, that's, I think a lot of love it, and dedication right there. That's pure <laughs> love and freaking dedication right there. Yeah, and I and like because her her brother, I mean he he gets me a lot because his heat pit sends me, and he's just like, okay, it's food time. So I have to be careful with him. And I've kind of got him to the point now where if I can get to like back by his tail before he notices me and just give him a rub, then he's like, oh, okay. And then I can Target. touch him wherever. Um, but the, the female, she just, she eats, but she's just not. She doesn't have that food drive like she should. Basically. Yep. Yep. See, she, probably... can't, she can't flick her tongue either. So I think okay. that's part of my problem is she can't actually like she can't smell what's going on really. Yeah, and she can do it, but she has just enough of a cleft palate like you can see underneath 
that it's doing it, but it doesn't come all the way out. Okay. So it's kind of like, all right, I mean, but she just, she doesn't follow anything. So I don't know. I might end up saying goodbye to her, but we'll see. Well, I commend you for doing, going like, I'm like, I wasn't expecting that long. Like, mm -hmm. that's a long time. That, like I said, that's pure love <laughs> for the animals and dedication to the animals to be doing. Cause most people would have said, all right, we've had enough of this crap. Like, I've got one right now from my last clutch of last year. And it's a pastel OD, beautiful little girl, beautiful. She's the only one, like, her. I only kept one of her siblings, which was a pastel OD exantic het clown female. That one stayed. All the other siblings have gone on the bigger and greener pastures. She's the only one that's still here. And like, for whatever reason, she just does not want to eat on her own. Like, I've got a cyst feeder. She fights the one, the one week I stuck it in her mouth. Gave it a tug. She coiled it. I thought, thank God. Like, th th like th we've got this down now. Next one will be set. Yep. And went to feed her the next week. Nothing. I was like, all right, well, I'll let you go this week. We'll try you next week. And if not, you, if you don't eat next week, then we'll assist again. And, like, that's just been the pattern. It's just like, why, like, why are you not getting this yet? It's like, mm -hmm. and, and then, then it becomes a moral thing. It's like, is she just not meant to go or, or like, like, is there something where like, she's just a pain in the butt and you just got to, you know, wait her out. Yep. Um, like I, I've gone to the pet stores. I've gotten live mouse hoppers. I've gotten, you know, tiny, basically rat fuzzies live, try to, you know, get her to go the live train. That doesn't work. So it's just like, sometimes it, it definitely leaves you scr scratching your head, wondering at what point do you say enough is enough? Yeah. And then with you just saying that, I say, like, all right, well, I certainly can't call it work now. Like <laughs> I, now I would feel like a complete jackass if I did that. Yeah. <laughs> I did well, I mean, and the, like mine's the same way. way. She, she gets my hopes up because one day she'll just be like, all right, all right, you got it in my mouth. We're good to go. Yeah. And like, I'll have one or two feedings like that. And then it'll just kind of be like, eh. And then I'm kind of like, okay. Okay, what what was that? And it just it, like she just she takes me on this roller coaster, and I'm just kind of getting to that point now where I'm like, all right, you either need to figure this out or, yeah. especially yeah, that, with, with 18 clutches coming this year, I I yeah, I was just say that's gonna be you will rapidly I think find out that that is gonna be a big time consumer taking care of all those babies and. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It sucks having something like it sounds bad to say, but it sucks having a heart sometimes and loving the animals so much because you yeah. do want them all to thrive. You want them all to be successes. And sometimes it's just not in the cards, sadly. I mean, yeah. But the thing, like, if they're if if you can get them to take it without an issue, does taking that a couple minutes really hurt? Right. I guess not. I mean, you're probably not going to sell her no matter what, because if she's got some issues, so she's there with you no matter what anyway. Yeah. Um, but it does come down to, you know, I guess morals and like, does it like, is it just kind of at that point? Are you kind of at that point where enough's enough? Like maybe mother, maybe I'm just limping mother nature along here. and Mother nature has been trying to tell me for too long yep. and, you know, I get it. Like, that's kind of where, like, with that girl, I'd say, all right, how long, like, when do I say you either sink or swim? And, like, I, I was looking at her today. I Well, I'm not going to bother her. <laughs> um, like, if you look at her sibling, her sister that I held back and compare it to her, it is not, like, she, her sister is double or triple her size already. Mm -hmm. And they hatched in December. So it's just like, man, like, I don't know. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's, uh, that's a struggle. Like that, that, that the going back kind of to where what started it. Like that that is a struggle that I, I knew was gonna come someday, having to make that decision. I mean, coming from horse world, dog world, cat world, like I try to 
put quality of life first, but yeah. it's just like the roller coaster she puts me on. I'm just kind of like, you're not helping. <laughs> <laughs> But just to, like for the first clutch to have five that we just right away had to euthanize, like I didn't expect that. I figured they'll either make it full term or they won't. Yeah. Like, and they, to me, shouldn't have been breathing in that egg, but they were, and it was creepy. <laughs> oh, that would freak me out. I mean, I've, I've heard some weird shit. Like Nathan hatched a weird ass clutch out and I never saw it. He was telling me about it. And it just like I, I was just like, what? Like, mm-hmm. like that's freaking possible. Yeah. Like it completely blew my mind that how these things were configured was even possible for them to make it to full term. And I like I think Nathan cut the clutch uh, more than likely, but still, it's like some of that shit. It's just like how does Mother Nature do that to its like man? Yep. It's, Eric, it's crazy. What's up, Eric? Yes, smash that like button. I do want to say what's up to Ashley and Nikita from Pip Stalkers. They are one of the OG channel members. Thank you very much for tuning in, Ashley. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all the love and support as well. I did make the announcement earlier, but this either this Saturday or next Saturday, I'm going to be trying to do a, a member live. So hopefully you can make it. Um, back to the things like as far as struggling with being like with being a breeder, becoming a breeder. I, I know the biggest thing for me was direction, like finding that direction and sticking to the direction. Mm-hmm. Um, has that been a challenge for you at all, or have you or was having Brian kind of I don't want to say you're the, the ace up your sleeve, but having him essentially as an ace up your sleeve. Did that kind of help keep you on a direction? Not really. Um, <laughs> the way you said it, no, not really. <laughs> so, I mean, and 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 we are I te- technically um, what everyone now classifies as um, COVID breeders. Like, yeah, but I mean, technically, we started before, but um, so it just kind of oh, that's pretty. And then you buy it, right? And then all of a sudden you're like, wait, I need something to breed to that. So then you got to find So that was kind of what I did at first. Um, okay. Last year I got um, into Baker's group. Um, and I just, I, I wish now that I would have had them in my back pocket when we started to be able to just bounce ideas and be like, would this really be a good idea like if i wanted to go this direction and like just having them now to just kind of help guide is helpful yeah but um i think having people like that definitely helps and i do wish i had them to start but well i know like like i was saying for me like I had a somewhat direction. Ashley, thank you very much for gifting out five memberships. That's awesome. Thank you very much, girl. Um, I, I like direction was one thing where I thought like I had it down. I, I told myself three recessives. Um, that she said she got it. She gave her <laughs> Nathan. <laughs> Nathan got another membership. I'll tell you what, Nathan cannot get away. From being a channel member, like YouTube will not let him not be a member. It's freaking hilarious. <laughs> uh, that's freaking hilarious, Nathan. It sucks, doesn't it? <laughs> um, Jamie, I I'm allowed to gift memberships as well, like I think cha- I don't know like channel members. I they're able to gift memberships somehow. I don't know how it goes on their end. I'm allowed to gift memberships uh, like once a month. So, uh, yeah, I think I did my membership gift last last week with Kai on his live auction, I think. Um, <laughs> Chris, get, did Chris get one too? That's funny as hell. <laughs> um, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's just funny. Um, 
Oh, all right. We're back on to direction. I I need some direction now. I get <laughs> world moments and derailing here. Um, my big like I I start off with Exantic as my main focus, DG and Clown because all those the other two work so good with Exantic, or at least in my head, the DG would work good with Exantic. I don't think they had DG Exantic wasn't a, like a huge thing by that point when I originally started the whole the whole plan to do it um now i've added pied i've added hypo but everything i've added you know i wasn't planning on uh nathan how do i gift memberships uh i have to do it god I... no no you're, you're good ashley <laughs> you're good you, you didn't mess me up it, it's always nathan nathan always messes me up uh nathan i think you have to go down to where you can like super chat stuff and I think you can gift memberships that way. I'm not entirely. I think that's how I have to do it. Um, but uh, anyway, Eric, <laughs> Eric. <laughs> um, but everything that I went and got into, I always in the back of my head say, will it work with Exanthe? Because that's that's basically how I want everything to be. I want when I go to a show, I want all the animals in the displays to be black and white. Or something that will make black and white snakes. Yeah. That's just how I want everything to be. Um, there were a few times I wavered a little bit. And having a good close group like uh, these guys here, John and Christine from Triforce Morris, Nathan. Like when we go out and like this is where having these big shows like uh, Gettysburg, for instance. You know, where we set up the night before and then we go out to eat that later on that night. Like there's a lot of productive talk that happens at those, you know, dinner time meetings and shit. Um, those two alone have helped me out, whether they know it or not. And I've told, well, they know it because I've told them several times. Um, I've also cursed them because I came home that night and I sat down here in the snake room when I should have been sleeping <laughs> and going over, okay, what do I need to readjust here in my whole collection? But it you know like having a nice support system where they do where you they help steer you if you do start to waver or get off of your direction there a little bit yeah because i started getting some odds and ends stuff that's like okay it really didn't fit or it really didn't work now i've bought some males that are crazy ass males here recently or and uh that yeah, there were no hats. <laughs> Maybe not cry, but close to it. <laughs> um, but I've gotten some males here recent, basically this year, that you know they have no exantic ties, but for goal animals to produce, and as far as injecting those genes into exantic. They're perfect for doing it. Now, granted, they're probably only good for, well, the, some of them are good for a couple of years. Some of them are good for a couple of years because they work so well with other projects as well. But as far as like the exanthic aspect of them goes, as long as I can hit what I need to hit that first year with them, that's basically they've served their purpose as far as injecting in, into the exanthic stuff. Um, <laughs> our job is to make the camera cry. Yes. <laughs> But like it, it, it's easy to get off track though, when it comes to breeding these things. Because like you said, you, you've got you, you see all these pretty things. And it's like that. I like that. I like this. I like that. And it gets easy to impulse buy, and then you get it, and you're like, shit. How am I really going to use this now? And yep. I think, like for me, when I'm at a show, one vending helps. Vending helps being out of show because you don't have time really to walk around and or at least i don't because normally dom's sleeping so i have to be at the table um so i don't have that luxury of going out walking around and getting myself into trouble too much what gets me into trouble is having friends like i do mm. uh, you get to talking or they send pictures and then that's where you get into the trouble at but if they're good friends they won't let you do impulse buys and do stupid shit Yep. Um, but always in the back of my head, it's like I've always asked myself, I think that's one thing every a lot of people need to ask themselves too is 
is this do i really need this is it going to progress my projects in the future or do i just want this because it's new shiny and it's pretty mm -hmm. <laughs> freaking chris all is dude i will say all right the pastel Atlantic boy that i had all right at the show i will say he did have a green tint to him because of the freaking displays. It was kind of badass. He looked radioactive. <laughs> it, it was, it was, um, it, it was cool. Uh, Andrew says that sounds like a good business off track exotics. That actually does kind of sound good. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, like, I think that's a, like, I think that's one thing everybody, if, anybody takes away from here at the end here as far as things to you know realities and things other breeders have problems with it's the direction is the big key mm -hmm. uh, i think that's the big thing we all struggle with yeah. and uh, it's something where i mean it's on us to you know not get off track but it's super super hard to not get off track and it's super easy to do it mm -hmm. <laughs> Yes, it is. <laughs> but Taylor, it is after 10. You're tired. You're on one brain cell. <laughs> Hang on here one second. Everybody, thank you very much for tuning in and hanging out with us. I greatly appreciate all the love and support. Uh, make sure you guys go and check out all of our channel members. Definitely check out all of our channel sponsors, please. And Ashley, thank you so much for gifting out five memberships. That was badass. I greatly appreciate all your love and support as well. Um, this week, folks, the video, excuse me, is cutting clutch number one. Now there is a, there is a leak I left to get out there. If you're not in some of the chats that I'm in, uh, it's the leaks been, I put the leak out into a couple different chats that I'm in, but also the leak went out to another YouTubers, uh, channel as well. Uh, so if you guys have, saw the leak awesome if not you don't know who the daddy of this clutch is and uh let me tell you you need to watch and see some of these badass babies that hatch out this week um clutch number one make sure you guys check it out next week i've got zach i'm gonna i i know i'm gonna butcher it i i've been trying to practice this from like from the word go zach from par parts pristine pythons uh i know i probably butchered i'm sorry zach but you're not here anyway so <laughs> you can't really yell at me but anyway he will be on next week so we're gonna dive into mainly all basically his business yes he is part teamed up with husbandry pro so we might talk a little husbandry pro and what his role with it is but i want to focus on him and his breeding stuff uh mainly so make sure you guys do tune in for that. This week, hopefully, I also pull... I keep looking back there. She's not doing anything that's making me think she's lying. Um, hopefully, I do get to pull the second carpet clutch of the year. And I will tell you this much, folks. You will probably see me get bit on that one. So I don't know if you want to cross your fingers on that one and hope I do. Maybe you want to say a prayer for me that I don't, which I would appreciate. Um, but I every time I've checked on her, she's left me known that She's not too happy of a girl. So I think I'm going to get my ass lit up on that one. So you will get to see that. I will not edit that out. I've also been told by several people to make sure I don't edit my ass getting lit up by a carpet. So um, <laughs> my, my, he's saying a pray. God, yeah, I just feel I just feel the love on this. Uh, but I do appreciate all the love and support, guys. Make sure you guys please hit that like button. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button as well. Make sure that notification bell is rung to all notifications and uh, channel members. Like I said, even if you got a member gift a membership gifted to you, uh, make sure you have those notifications activated because you will get notified when I do set up that member only live. So uh, that's basically turned like if you will be up here on this big screen with me and everybody else. Um, but definitely, you know, Try to make those lives. They're, they're fun. They're nice little hangouts. We bounce ideas off of each other. I do try to book guests here and there just to talk about different topics and everything. I had Nathan on for one uh, to go over branding, marketing, all that stuff. That was a really good live as well. So uh, if you are a member and you're a new member, 
and you missed that one, go check that out because it was very informative as well. But uh, Taylor, thank you again for joining me tonight. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your evening because I know you're tired. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. But hang on one second, everybody. Have a great week. And thank you again so much. I greatly appreciate it. Later. <laughs>